So welcome to Virtual Sipping and Painting Hampton. We're glad you could join us today. So let's see, in addition to my drink and snacks, I also have two glasses filled with water. And I know that you got a little kit in the mail, so there's a little uh, water container you can use as well. I'm reaching over to my kit materials. You can use the little water container that came around the paints if you don't have jars around. Um, personally, I use two jars just so I don't have to keep getting up and cleaning, getting clean water to clean my brushes. So any sort of containers will do for that. And then I have a big, medium, and small brush. You also have brushes that came in the kits, which are big, medium, and small. They're just bigger or less big, less medium, and less small than these. But uh, these are just big, long brushes. But same, same, just need three different size brushes. And then we have paper towels to blot those brushes on as we paint, or an old t-shirt will do as well. I've got a canvas. Hopefully you got something to paint on there. And um, I have it up on the easel so you can see it, but laying it down will work perfectly fine too. There's no magic to painting on the easel. Some artists just prefer to do it that way. I also have the paint set up. I have red, blue, white, black, yellow, which is what came with your kit, but I also cheated and got green because I had green. But if you don't have green, do not despair because I'm sure you have all been to elementary school and learned how to make green and we will do that too. So um, there's no, no, uh, no danger. You can always mix up some green. But if you have that handy, if you happen to have acrylic paint at home, you can add that to the palette. It just gave you a step. So let's see, paint, water, things to blot on, uh, brushes, canvas, drinks. Cool, we got it all. So welcome. I'm glad you brought your events. Uh, right now we have a big group, so we have everybody on mute, but I'll give you breaks at times and we'll unmute you, let you chat with each other, and it'll give us a chance to let our paint dry too. So we're gonna go through this painting together and I'm doing the Aspen Forest today. And it's a real easy going painting. We were talking about having the easel horizontally set today, but you can also set it vertically if you have a, a rectangle. It doesn't really matter because you can paint it either way and make it make it the way you want it so it'll match your decor later. So the important thing is that you are happy with your work of art because you're the artist and you're gonna be looking at it when it's done or else if you really hate it then you can give it away to a friend right and then or especially well you can give it away to an enemy if you really hate it right. So um, I'm gonna start with the big brush and I'm gonna wet that brush off with water. And I'm going to uh, take that and dip it first in the white paint. And I have my paper plate. This is not a fancy palette. It's just a paper plate with some paint on it. And uh, maybe having an extra paper plate would be handy too if you want to do some mixing if you don't have that green. But I'm going to start with uh, just a little bit of white on my damp brush and then some blue paint as well. And I'm going to add water by dipping that in my water jar as well. So it's got white blue and water, and I'm gonna mix that all up on the canvas to start. And I'm gonna work this painting background to foreground, so I'm painting the background sky to start. So that's big brush, white paint, little bit of blue paint, and water to spread it all out. Now the water thins down the acrylic paint, and it actually allows it to dry faster if it's thinned down with water. So that's why we add water to the paint. When we paint with acrylics, it's always this process of uh, adjusting the water with the amount of paint. So it's okay if it's drippy like that and thin. That's actually good. We want it to go on in thin layers. So a lot of white paint, a little bit of blue paint, and water to start. And I'm going to cover the whole background with that color. And you can feel free to ask us questions on the chat any any time. And if you do have a question, you can also unmute yourself for that question as well. I'm just going in all different directions with you throw strokes, just spreading blue paint on that background. Hey, 
Hey, Thea, did you, I wasn't listening at the beginning, sorry. Did you say water first? Yeah, so I start the big brush by dipping it in the water jar and blotting it on the paper towel just to get the brush kind of, just to get it damp. And then I mix the pink with water, with uh, starting with white and then adding a little bit of blue as well. Here. And you can be as messy as you want with this and have fun going all different directions and spread out the paint. I kind of mix the paint on the canvas as I go. So I just pick up a little bit of white, a little bit of blue on the brush, and then I mix it up when I spread it out on the canvas like this. That way, if I feel like, well, it needs to be a little bit darker blue, I just add a little more blue into the paint. Now, if it gets too dark, it's harder to make it lighter because the dark colors want to take over. So in that case, you'd want to switch that brush around really well in the water jar, get it all clean, blot it on the paper towel, and then start fresh with just plain white paint if you wanted to lighten up your background. Make sure when you go between colors, you always clean your brushes. Swish them around really well, blot them on a paper towel. Always want to be working with clean brushes. And here I'm using, I just dipped my brush in the water to use the water to spread the paint out on the canvas. And if you decide you want a real smooth texture, when you get the whole thing covered with color, you can then go in one direction with your brush strokes. Like I'm going up and down, or maybe you want to go side to side. Once I have it all covered with a color and it's still wet, I can just smooth out those brush strokes by making them go in one direction or the other. And if I go all the way across the canvas, big long brush strokes, I can get it nice and smooth. Let me hold that up so you can see that a little closer. There we go. I almost dip my brush in my uh, white claw. Don't do that. Make sure you keep those drinks apart from the water jar. I'm also going to paint all the way around the sides. If you're working on canvas, then the canvas have uh, stretcher bars that it's wrapped around. So I'm going around that edge, that half inch edge with my blue color all the way around. And that will keep me from needing a frame for it when I hang it up tonight. I think I heard somebody say before we got started that they have all their sipping and painting paintings hanging at their house, which is cool. I do too. Remember to go underneath. That edge that's sitting on the easel needs to get covered as well. Now I'm wearing gloves because I get painty doing things like this, picking up the canvas and while well, it's still wet, but the paint is not toxic. When you uh, are done painting for the day, just, just wash it off with, it likes to be washed off with hot well, soapy water. So you can, you don't need gloves. I just, I use those gloves, you know, that you get little vinyl gloves, but that's just because I don't like to get painty. I know that's a weird quality in an artist, but
but I work with a lot of paint. So. Cool. All right. Okay. Yeah, and I gotta paint that top edge as well. Get my background painty. All right, and when I'm not using the brushes, I just drop them in the water jar. And that is so the brushes don't dry out while we're working because we wanna be able to clean them later. And acrylic paint is kind of a plastic, so it'll dry hard on those brushes if you let it. So I just leave it sitting in the water jar while I'm working. And then at the end of the day, I can clean those off. And let me tell you before you're uh, too far into your drinks like I am, um, that. The way you clean those brushes is we'll take them uh, from the water jar at the end of the day, take a little bit of liquid soap in your palm, uh, uh, scrub those brushes around in the liquid soap, and then uh, let hot water run over them until the water runs clear. And then you uh, leave your brushes sitting horizontally sideways on the uh, kitchen counter or on the sink counter. Oh gosh, not the kitchen because we don't want to we don't want to clean the brushes in the kitchen sink. Clean them in a clean them in a uh, sink that doesn't that you don't eat stuff from. <laughs> and then um, just leave them sitting horizontal so that they dry nice and flat. All right, and so right now, let me hold this up a little closer. I just have white paint and a little bit of blue paint mixed with a lot of water and I spread it all over that canvas. And now holding it up, hopefully you can see there's a little bit of texture to that paint because you can see my brush strokes. And that is because I've applied a first layer and uh, those brush strokes show a little bit, but I can smooth that out in a second layer. Now, if you keep working the paint, you kind of can overwork acrylic paint and then it picks up these weird brush textures when it's half dry. So that, is why you need to relax and have a snack, drink a little and chat with your friends. So I'm gonna let it dry for just a minute and uh, you can all have a little uh, meeting time with one another. Cheers. Smaller brushes seem to take a little longer, but it's fun. Does anybody else have a bunch of their paintings on their walls? I think I have at least half a dozen. And I'm just letting this paint dry. You can use this time to either chat or catch up with me. I don't know if I have a great answer for that. 
<laughs> my assistant just handed me the pizza box, but unfortunately I didn't open it like a pizza box, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I would just lay the painting down and paint flat. You can also, if you have a canvas, there are bars on the back of your canvas. What you can do is you can prop the box underneath one of the bars since you have it sitting horizontally sideways, um, and you can prop it up from the back of the canvas. Um, I'm just waiting for this to dry. You will know if it's dry if you, um, well, gosh, if you have, since you're all painting at home, you, you might not have a friend around to wipe your painting on, but you can always wipe it on a pet, right? But if they run away and they're blue, you'll know it's still wet. Um, now I just look at it from an angle. If it looks glossy, it's still wet. I can still see the little glossy, I don't know if you can see it shining in the light there, little glossy places. So it just needs another couple minutes to dry. I have a question. Uh -huh. Sorry, I joined late. What was the first step of the painting? Do we have to make blue and white together? Yeah, so first we started with our big brush and just wet the brush in the water and plot it on the paper towel to get it started. And then add a little bit of white to the brush. And so it's mostly white and then a little bit of blue and I kind of mix it up with the canvas as I go together with the water. So it's mostly white, water, and a little bit of blue and mix it all together as you paint on the background. And we just covered the whole thing with blue to get started because we're painting the sky, working this painting background to foreground. Okay, thank you. That is one of the things I love about the Zoom classes. I get to see everybody's pets. And you can kind of check out your painting. Once it does look dry or chalky at an angle, then you can put a second layer of paint on the background. And so I'm gonna do second step very much the same as the first. I had the brush sitting in my water jar and I'm just taking that brush out of the water jar. I take the water off by rubbing over the lip of the jar and then blotting it on. I have an old t-shirt, but you can blot it on paper towels to get the extra water out and then dip that brush in the white paint and in a little bit of blue paint. I got that going on my plate and put a second layer of light blue on that canvas. And it's really meant to be about the same color as the blue underneath. Maybe I started a little bit light there. Can add a little more blue in? But just putting a second layer. And my purpose on doing that is just to get rid of some of those brush strokes and smooth out that paint so that we get a nice smooth layer of sky in the background. So that's big brush dipped in the water, then dipped in the white paint, a little bit of blue paint, spread it out on the canvas in a second layer. Just make sure your paint underneath is dry before you paint a second layer because you don't want to overwork that paint. And if it's not dry, just relax and have a drink. Tova says, has anyone ever told you that you look just like the mom from the TV show, Parenthood?
to you. And I'm just putting that second layer of paint on and I'm going in all different directions with these brush strokes, but um, when I'm done getting the paint applied in that second layer, I can smooth it out by going all the way across, either horizontally or up and down with my brush strokes and that'll smooth out that second layer of blue paint. Hey, Thea, will we need white paint for anything else in this painting? White paint's always good, yeah. We probably will use white, yes, well definitely, because we have the aspens coming up. All right, so I have a second layer of paint on there. And here, I don't know if we can see this on the screen, but there's a little part where it wasn't quite dry when I started that second layer. And so it did get that kind of overworked look to it. And that is when I need to stop. I just need to stop and relax and let that dry. For the most part, I got a nice smooth layer on there. So it's all gonna be good. And there's two ways to think about that little messed up part. One is to totally let it dry and then you can go over it with another layer of paint and that'll fix it. Another way is to, if your viewer gets too close to your painting later and looks at all your mistakes, you just poke them in the eye with the brush, right? You can do that. Or the other thing is we're gonna paint this whole forest of trees over that sky, so don't stress about it at all because nobody will ever see it. So that's what I choose to do. So I'm gonna just let that second layer of paint dry and I'm gonna enjoy my dream. So you're welcome to chat amongst yourselves. I don't think I'm gonna be the next Picasso here. I don't know, this painting, it doesn't even have a Picasso vibe. It kind of has more of a, 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 a Monet kind of feel to it. No, not even, like um, Surratt. It's a lot of little dots. Yeah, I definitely more, like Surratt more palette. More impressionistic, I'd say. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for... I, I definitely like able to pull off an impression of a tree, but I mean, we're talking like vague representations here. <laughs> Is there like a wrong amount of paint to use? Like, is there such thing as using too much? I would say I, I usually use less paint. So I, I don't know if you can tell on my plate, I just kind of picked up just a little bit off the white and blue so far. They actually don't need to use too much paint. So oh. even I think that it's fun to play with, so people tend to want to use a lot, but I go with less is better. Gotcha. Just remember to leave the brushes in the water jar when you're not using them.
you're welcome to take your time finishing up this background. I know you're using smaller brushes and uh, it might take you a little bit longer. So I have a little 16 by 20 canvas here and I'm using a big, medium, and small brush, but it's okay if you're working a little smaller. And if you have smaller brushes, just take your time and we'll get that background on there. And then we'll paint these, this nice aspen forest in front of it. While you're doing that, I can let you know, I think you also have all got these cute uh, masks. You got a little sipping and painting, little brandy masks. So that's kind of fun. And um, if you're local to Denver, you can pick up, we also have uh, these, Oh, where is it? I have, we have uh, kind of more impressionistic masks kind of that match this painting at the studio. So you can come by and see those. Those are for sale. And we'll put the original of this painting up for sale in the shop as well. And you can bring us yours to show as show and tell if you're local. Uh, shop hours are in the afternoon. And um, we also do have some small classes going on there. So you can look on our upcoming calendar and see what's going on at Sipping Painting Anthem. Amber said that she didn't get a mask either. Sorry, Amber. Maybe you'll get the certificate, to, you know, you know, for a free class. <laughs> oh yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I know another thing we have going on in the studios is we're selling kits like the one you got today for both uh, grown-ups and for kids as well. So um, if you end up doing the homeschooling route, you can get kids kits and they can learn to paint. Uh, they can have sippy cup and painting. <laughs> I'm just looking at my painting from an angle. You can see it's really glossy because it's so wet. So I'll let that dry. And I know this is a kind of work get together, right? And, uh, but are any of you celebrating anything else besides worky things? I'm sorry, what was your question? Do you have any other celebrations, personal celebrations going on besides, um, I know this is a work get together, but uh, do we have other things that we should toast to? National Friendship uh, Day. Yeah, there's a lot of things. What, what you got? Thing, uh, which is Friday Eve, and that deserves a toast, I think. Yeah, exactly. Friday Eve? It's Friday Eve, so it, that deserves a toast. Oh, uh, I was like, it's Thursday. <laughs> yeah, Friday Eve. Oh, and, and also it's a payday Eve. Toast. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. Well, even better. How about, how about to the holidays, all 365 of them? 
Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Ah! Sorry. Oh my God, baby. Sorry. Oh, and um, someone said this was National Friendship Day. So as you go forth on this day, remember always that if you cannot be with the one you love, love the wine you're with. My, my wine is weight claw. <laughs> well, time for a refill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of watching paint dry, which is, you know, why we drink. <laughs> I, know, I, finished my I finished my box of wine. I saw, I mean, I poured it into my glass, but it's empty now, so... <laughs> My my box of black box wine. <laughs> that sounds good. It is actually pretty good. I recommend it. It is black box Pinot Grigio. Very nice. Cool. A white wine. And I think goes it's well rather. I think it's affordable because that's when my husband bought it for me. <laughs> I told you you need a second box. Yeah, I don't. Again. And my painting would just be all smears of yellow paint at that point. If I were to get a second box, that would be a bad idea because I'm already a little, you know, doing, I'm doing all right. Let's just. Yeah, but that's abstract, right? Isn't that trendy? Like you could put that in a gallery downtown. Well, I mean, I should do that anyway. I think no matter how it turns out, it should go in a gallery. It's going to be fantastic, but yeah. True. Yeah. I mean it'll yeah, right it'll now, go in like it'll go in the Mets gallery either way. It's gonna be up in in their one of paintings. So either way. All right, so hopefully you've had that background sitting there, you get a little chance to dry, and now it's a nice, uh, it's totally abstract painting blue, and we're going to add our aspen forest over that. Now, this is a great painting because it's um, very open-ended in how you can uh, make variations on it. So I have aspens here, which have the white bark, but you can also make a uh, regular tree. Somebody asked if we needed white um, for the trees. If you already ran out of white, don't despair. You could always make brown tree trunks. They don't have to be aspens on your painting. Nobody will see my sample, so they won't know uh, what the original looked like. And you can make any kind of painting that you like. But I'm going to stick with uh, copying my sample, and I'm going to move to a smaller brush to make those tree trunks. And you can either choose a medium-sized brush or a small brush uh, to start. If you want a little more hand control then start with a small brush and we can make our aspen trunks and uh, you can always make them bigger by widening them out with a small brush or moving to a larger brush but smaller one gives you more hand control so i'm going to leave behind the big one sitting in the water jar and i'm just going to get out this little guy i have a little round here and wipe that to start and i'm going to wipe that on the paper towel and pick up white paint and we have a whole forest of aspens that start from the very bottom of the canvas and go most of the way up towards the top. So starting from the left here, um, we're just going to make some straightish lines going up. Now it's okay if you're still fully caffeinated from your Starbucks this morning and your hand shakes because these don't have to be really straight lines. They can wiggle too and that'll make them look a little bit more natural, a little bit more swaying with the wind in the forest, and that's cool too. But keep in mind that trees are always widest from the point at which they grow and they get skinnier as they move up and away from that point of growth. So they're wider at the bottom and I'm making them skinnier as I go up towards the top. And you can do that by pulling the brush away from the canvas as you paint and then it'll sort of uh, come to a point or 
else just make them a little bit wider by making a second brush stroke and widening out the trunks towards the bottom. My little skinny brush. And I always start by wet wetting the brushes just to get them started. I'm not adding a whole lot of water to the paint now. I'm just mostly using that white paint as it comes from the container. Now there's a whole forest across this canvas and you can make some of those trunks skinnier and some wider as you move across here. Make some of those closer together and some farther apart too to give some variation to your forest. So I'm continuing from the left and moving towards myself with some more trees and I'm going to sway some of them slightly diagonal left and right to give it some variation too. But I'm making those wider towards the roots and skinnier as they move up and they go almost uh, three quarters of the way up the canvas. That is what that looks like. Got my first couple of trees started. And you don't even have to worry about making branches for these guys right now. We're just doing the tree trunks. This third tree I'm going to make closer together. It's about one finger from the previous tree that I painted, one finger width away. I'm kind of twisting that brush around on my finger too to get the paint from all sides of that brush as I move it up the canvas. And I know we were talking about um, using the box as a easel, but I I think it's just as easy to paint laying down. The only magic to painting on an easel is that you can step back from the work as you're painting and take the whole thing in, which is always important. So if you do have it sitting on a table, just make sure you stand back from it and look at it from several feet away, because that's the way your viewer will experience your finished piece. And you want to make sure that you're taking the whole thing in like the viewer is going to see it. If you get impatient with the skinny brush, you can move to a medium sized brush. Whenever I get these brushes started for the day, I do dip them in the water jar and blot them on the paper towel to get them damp. But I'm gonna use my medium sized brush to make a couple of these aspen trees. And I am making them wider at the bottom by pressing the brush to the canvas and then lifting it up and off towards myself as I go up to make it skinnier towards the top of the tree going up about two thirds or three quarters of the way up the canvas. And making some of those trees closer to each other and some further apart. It's also good sometimes to add a little bit of water to the paint when you're painting. I generally try to keep the paint the consistency of Hershey's syrup because we want it to flow nice and smoothly for us. If you let the paint get a little bit too dry on your palette, you can kind of see this plaid canvas texture showing through and it'll make the paint look a little bit rough. So if you add a little bit of water, it'll smooth out that effect and get rid of that texture. I'm going to go all the way across the canvas with different trees. Some skinnier and some wider. These are only about the width of a finger, about half inch wide, maybe the widest ones. The skinny ones are about the width of a pencil.
and they don't have to be straight lines. It's okay if your hand wiggles. And they don't all have to be the same height. They can be uh, some taller than the others. When I do leave my brushes in the water jar, I just swish them around to get them clean. I don't know if you could hear my little swishy brush cleaning here. I picked up my little skinny brush because I want a variation in how wide my trees are. I have about a dozen trees going across and I want some skinnier and some wider. And I'm also picking the canvas up off of the easel and just making sure I go around the bottom to complete that gallery wrap. I just like to complete the illusion going all the way around the edges of these canvases because that way when I hang it up, I don't need a frame. I hang all my sipping and painting paintings up my stairwell. And if you go up, you can see if you forgot the bottom. So you want to make sure you pick that up and finish those bottom edges as well. All right, so right now we just have a forest full of sticks and that's okay. If you wanna, if you're a fast painter and you wanna do a little bit extra, you could add a few branches to your trees. We're gonna paint a whole lot of leaves going over these trees. So if you're not into branches, the leaves will probably obscure that anyway in our uh, later layers. But if you want some of those, trees to have branches. I always think of it as uh, adding them in kind of Y shapes or V shapes from the main trunk. Just make sure that if you break a branch off of the main trunk that it's uh, either as wide as that trunk at that point or skinnier and then you can move that away in a Y shape or V shape. So you don't want to go, you always want to go skinnier as you move away from the point of growth. So skinnier than your trunk and then lifting the brush up and off in a, in a Y shape or a V shape and you can add a few branches if you like to some of your trees. But this is not required. It's only if you have a little bit of extra time and you want to kind of add another dimension to those trees. You can add a few little Y shape or V shape branches and that, that's how that looks. painting our happy little trees. We're big fans of Bob Ross at uh, Sipkin Painting Hampton because the owner is a certified Bob Ross instructor and there are very few certified Bob Ross instructors west of the Mississippi because their school is in Florida and uh, Nancy has gone down there several years in a row and picked up their uh, techniques learning from their school and she teaches the Bob Ross classes. Um, so look for those on our upcoming calendar and uh, those are six hour long classes with oil paints and uh, you can learn a whole different technique. So maybe we'll uh, have those Bob Ross classes coming up. We'll have to look on the calendar and see. Otherwise, uh, while you're online, you can check out this video and other painting videos from our acrylic painting series on our YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe to our channel and like the videos and then we can keep making them and uh, become YouTube famous.
All right, so now I have a whole series of white aspen trunks going across the canvas and they go about two thirds to three quarters of the way up the canvas. In fact, you could go all the way up off the top if you like with those, if you have some really tall ones on your aspen forest, but some of them I just made a few branches and little Y shapes coming off of the trunk there. Just make sure you make those branches skinnier than the main trunk as they come off and then have them come to a point at the end so that they get skinnier as they move away from the point of growth. So they're all a little bit wider at the bottom. You can see the towards the roots, I kind of widened those trees out and I went all the way underneath to complete the illusion of that gallery wrap as well. All right, and it's okay if they're a little bit wiggly, if they sway back and forth a little bit more diagonal to each other, some close together, some far apart, some wider, some skinnier, and uh, you just make happy little forest on your canvas. And if they look a little funny, that's okay too, because we're gonna cover them with a whole lot of leaves and nobody will ever know. And right now I'm just using white paint, making some of those branches. It's okay if they cross over the other trees too. And uh, in addition to drinking, if you want to pretend you're at the bar, you can also hit me up with a virtual tip in the Venmo tip jar. I have my Venmo at Ernstine Arts, and that's also up on one of your little screens if you forget my little Venmo. So always appreciated. Um, I always like to remember the days at the bar. So uh, if you want to hit me up in the virtual tip jar, that's a, always a cool thing. I always appreciate a little bit of extra love. Right now I'm just letting my aspen forest dry and letting you catch up with me on your tree trunks. And I think some of you are here in Colorado, right? But some of you are from other places, right? We have other states represented? Yeah, I'm uh, in Virginia. Oh, all right. So um, do you have Aspens over in Virginia? We do not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess we have birch trees on the East Coast. At least not, a, not around here. Um, I'm actually in the, in the mountains. So uh, you know, the Blue Ridge Mountains, of course, aren't, aren't too far away. There's a lot of poplar there. That's why they call them Blue Ridge Mountains, because they have a blue tint 
to things. Well, you um, get the spectacular falls with all the different colors. Yeah, the parkway is, Blue Ridge Parkway isn't too far. It's about 45 minutes from here. Um, yeah. So you can make your apartment. leaves any color you want because you get the whole uh, right. variety there. <laughs> all the yellows and the reds and mix it all together. Yeah, yeah. You, the, the fall colors, uh, some years you, you really you blink and you'll miss them. But mm -hmm. uh, they can be pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, a lot of times we'll get a, you know, real windy day or something. And the day after the colors are great. So <laughs> there goes all the leaves. Mm -hmm. Um, That's great. You enjoy it while well <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, they are pretty spectacular uh, when they uh, do happen. So, well, good. This is, uh, you know, our one color. We get aspens here, and um, we we embrace that. So we just get our yellow aspens. They have maybe a, there's a little bit of uh, orange, and this painting we we're gonna put in a little bit of red orange. But uh, I think that's more optimistic than anything else. Mostly here, we really get yellow and green. Yeah. And my assistant told me that um, the little well, Venmo jar asked for the my uh, little four digit code. So that's in the chat if you need it. So yeah, before I get to the fun leaves though, um, the aspen trees here always have little black marks on them. And I've heard that they're scars that are actually made from animals that come and nibble on the uh, trunks. I don't know if that's true, but uh, it's a nice idea. Maybe, maybe the elk come and nibble on those branches. I'm not sure. Who knows if that's a, uh, some kind of Colorado myth or if it's real. But I'm going to switch to my little skinny brush to make those little marks on the aspen trees and we'll kind of get uh, that texture going. So I did, I had it sitting in the water jar, so I just rolled that around on my paper towel. And when I do that, I, um, I kind of lay it flat and roll it around on the paper towel to get the water off of the wooden part of the brush, as well as just the uh, tip of the bristles. So we want to get all the water off the brush. And then I'm going to pick up some black paint with that little skinny brush. and make some marks on my aspens. And I think of this as making little dash marks or little um, zigzags. And we wanna really vary our marks. So we wanna make some close together and some far apart and some wider and some skinnier, kind of um, a, a variety. And I am keeping these um, kind of maybe a little more to the left side of the trees. I don't, I don't wanna say like, that's not gonna be a hard and fast rule. Some of them are gonna go all the way across but maybe more of the leftish side to kind of give it a um, kind of uh, rounded look to the tree trunk. So I am dotting some of those on there and let me hold that up a little closer so you can see it. Little kind of dots and dashes and zigzags with my little skinny brush to get little scars on my aspen trees. Just zigzagging back and forth. And it's okay if the paint is still wet underneath too, because it actually, uh, it'll pick up a little bit of that, but that's okay. And you can make it a slightly U-shaped brush stroke if you want to round out the shape of that tree, kind of make it look more like a cylinder. I don't know if I, I was not being that careful with these little dots and dashes. Maybe this one's a little bit more rounded out, but that's an option to make the brush stroke a little more U-shaped and it'll appear to wrap around that tree and make the tree a little bit more like a cylinder. I think that this is more of a loose painting and uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. That comes under the category of my viewers looking too closely at the painting if they're observing it to that level. But you know, if you're a perfectionist, that's okay too. So that's my first painting on, or my first tree on the left there with the 
little black marks all up and down. Some dots, some dashes, some zigzags, little skinny brush, black paint. And I'm gonna go all the way across my forest with that texture on all these little aspen tree trunks. I am crowding more of my brush strokes to the left hand sides of those trees to kind of organize it a bit and give it a little bit of the shading maybe. But again, not super critical. What's more interesting to me is just to give it a little bit of uh, variety of color and texture. And that's how that looks on the second tree. I did drop that brush into the water jar. If you do that between your trees, just make sure you get all the water off of it before you move on to the next tree because you don't want your paint to drip. In this case, you do want it to be uh, about as thick as it comes out of the container as you paint with it. So it doesn't drip down your tree trunks. We do want it not mixed with the water. So I'm wiping that brush off on paper towel or my, in this case, I have an old t-shirt. And I'm just dot, dot dashing here up the little aspen bark. They say that spans of aspens are one giant living thing all together. If you see a bunch of them in the forest, they're actually one giant tree with just a lot of different uh, kind of branches coming out of the ground, but they're all connected. Like avatar? Yeah, exactly. They're sprouts. They are, they're funny guys. And that's why they all turn yellow at the same time. Just try to keep away from making regular patterns. I was just about to, it's, it's hard to uh, kind of tamp down that tendency to make regular patterns and uh, try to make some of those marks closer together and some further apart and some wider and some skinnier. Dots and dashes. Let me hold that up so you can see it a little closer. You can see those aspens are coming alive with those little black markings. And I did say I was concentrating them on the left-hand sides of those trunks on mine, but I have to remember to make some coming from the right too, because I don't want to make them all the same. about halfway across and just want to hold that up so you can see it. And using that little skinny brush and black paint. And I'm kind of lightly pressing the brush to the canvas to get these brush strokes, kind of just skittering it across the surface of the canvas, if you will.
And sometimes because the paint's so dry, I'm getting that canvas texture showing through that kind of the plaid of the uh, weave of the cloth. And that's actually nice with these aspens. It, it gives a kind of natural look to that tree scarring. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to hold it up real close. You can, you can see it gives it a little bit of texture in there. Sometimes you get those happy little accidents as you paint. I always like to channel my inner Bob Ross. I'm kind of like doing his act, but I'm not nearly as chill as he was. And make sure you step back from your work as you're working on it and uh, see if you're kind of doing everything evenly. And if I'm trying to get marks on all of these trees and kind of apply it, uh, I don't know, so that they all get uh, equal attention. They don't all have to be exactly the same though. I can make more marks on some of the trees than others. Maybe I want to darken one up here and there. All right, I did end up making more black marks on these two trees and it just gives it a little variation. And now I have little scars on all my trees, but I'll give you a chance to catch up on, on your painting and then we'll add our leaves. Can do another toast in the meantime. May heaven grant you outward success and inward peace. Cheers. I'm just swishing my brushes around in the water jar. Gives me something to do while I'm hanging out here. Keep those brushes clean. I leave them all sitting in the water jar so that they don't dry out before I get a chance to clean them later.
Uh oh, someone said their wine's gone. Gotta go grab some more wine. Yeah, I'm actually I'm out of my white cloth. <laughs> you know the one? That's okay. <laughs> The great thing about doing the classes on Zoom and posting them on YouTube is you can paint anytime you want. And uh, if you paint in the morning, you can make yourself mimosas. All right, so hopefully you've gotten a chance to paint in all your aspen uh, tree trunks, and now we need to add the leaves over top. So this is where you can go wild with paint colors, but uh, I do, there is kind of a rhyme and reason to it. Let's talk a little bit about mixing first. So I cheated because I had green available, but you may not, so uh, it's okay, blue and yellow makes green, and we definitely have blue and yellow available, so we can use that. But when you mix, you also wanna add some white to the paint. Now, when you apply colors, if you play with this set and do some other paintings, you will find that some of the acrylic colors go on kind of thin. So the white acts as a primer and kind of thickens up the paint, makes it cover the previous layers better. So a lot of times when we're painting the subsequent layers of the painting, we add white to the paint, so it'll cover over better. And that is especially true in the case of the yellow. So if you're gonna make your own green, you might wanna get a separate paper plate to mix on, or maybe you have room. Uh, there's always room on my plate. I can kinda uh, find some spot on this paper plate, mix them up. I'll show you how that's done. I just uh, swished that medium-sized brush around in my water jar and I blotted it on the paper towel, laying it down flat to get all the water off of the handle as well as just the bristles. And now I'm gonna dip it in the white paint and the yellow paint and then a little bit of green. And that's because the darker color, oh, I'm sorry, I'm mixing green, duh. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. So, sorry, white paint, then yellow paint, then a little blue to make green. And we just need a tiny little bit of blue. You can see it made the same, <laughs> made the same green that I just had there anyway but it, you just need a tiny bit of blue because the dark colors will want to take over. So it's mostly white and yellow and then a little bit of blue if you want to mix that up yourself. So once you have that done, there's kind of an underpainting of green leaves. And I did start with a medium sized brush for this. You could also go with a big brush if you're working on a big canvas, but I want to load up the tips of the bristles of the paint brush with that green paint that I just mixed up and tap the surface of the bristles to the painting. So I'm just tap, tap, tapping. I'm kind of poking the canvas with the brush. You want to load it up with paint. So it has a lot of paint on the tips of the bristles of the brush, but it's kind of a light touch poking that painting. And you kind of can't go wrong. You can experiment with this to find your own perfect texture. But uh, I'm twisting the brush around in my fingers and poking it to that canvas and getting a whole layer of leaves on those trees. Now, with this painting, it's so um, kind of loosey-goosey and open-ended that I don't even have to worry where I'm particularly putting these leaves. They just need to be over top of the tops of my aspen trunks that I painted. And we do want to leave the bottom showing, but it's going to be pretty much leaves towards the top two-thirds of the canvas. And they can the leaves can go all the way uh, 
to the top of the canvas or you can leave some of that blue sky showing. Totally up to you. Keep that in mind though as you start to make these brush strokes. If you want to leave some of your blue sky showing through and give the birds a little to fly through your branches, you'll want to be mindful of, of letting some blue spaces show through. Right now I am starting with green paint and that'll kind of act as an underpainting and now I'm going to come back and put the brighter colors, the yellows, over the top. So I used that medium-sized brush, picked up white paint, mixed that with the yellow paint, then added a tiny bit of blue to make green, and I'm loading up the tips of the bristles of that medium-sized brush, and tap, tap, tapping those on over my aspen trunks and branches. And I'm gonna fill that space from about the halfway mark up the canvas all the way to the top. So some of those brush strokes will go right off the edge of the top of the canvas. Tap, tap, tapping. And you can twist the brush around as you go and experiment with different textures. If you press a little bit harder, you'll get a bigger brush stroke. Or a little bit lighter, you get a smaller brush stroke. And I'm just using the tips of the bristles. If you draw the brush across the canvas, you'll get a little shape of the brush. I had this uh, flat here. You get a little mark that's kind of a diamond shape. That's, that's an option too. It depends on your style. I'm mostly poking the canvas so that I'm using the brush end on to get a real rough little dot. Because I kind of want to make this look in it, like an impressionistic painting. Those are always really popular, those, that kind of Monet, sparkly, sunshiny look. And you don't have to worry about connecting these leaves to the branches. Nobody's going to look that close to see. They can just be floating right nearby your branches. That's another case where if they look too close, you just poke them. Don't let them get that close. If you just paint those leaves nearby the branches, your mind will kind of visually connect them and you, you don't need to be that careful. And I'm making some of those groupings of dots close together, some far apart, some leaves are just flying off on their own here and there. There's just a dot flying on its own. Let me hold that up so you can see that. Some of those guys are just off on their own, and some of them are more in groupings. And it's up to you how much green you want to put on there. You could go wild and paint a whole background of green. In fact, it doesn't even have to be autumn on your paintings. You could just make this summer and, and make green leaves and be cool with that. So that's an option. Uh, then you'd want to just keep filling them in with green or else you could just use it as an underpainting like I am and just put some of them green. And I am, uh, as I go down the trunks, some of them are gonna go lower on those tree trunks than others. I wanna vary that. I don't wanna leave them off all at the same height. I want some floating lower and some higher, kind of you know zigzag up and down with the heights of your, when you leave off with your green leaves. What's that? Yeah, and I am kind of tapping that all over these aspen branches. You can make as much of that uh, canopy of leaves green as you'd like. You could uh, go all over them with green and then come back with the yellow in our next layer and cover over some of that with the yellow. So it's okay. We're uh, 
doing this painting background to foreground and layering it. So you can always adjust it with the colors that we're going to put on uh, after we do the green. And this is kind of, depends on what kind of personality you have for painting on all these little dots. Some people are really uh, great impressionistic painters and they paint tons of little dots and you could just keep going at it all afternoon. I, uh, it's kind of a meditation, right? You can just keep tap, tap, tapping those on there. I gotta tell you, I do meditate and I still don't have a whole lot of patience. <laughs> I can only put so many dots. That's just, you know, I can do a bunch, but then I get a little tired of that. So, you know, put them on as long as it makes you happy. As much filling in as you want. You do want to make enough of them to make it look like it, uh, you know, your trees are all leafed out. Otherwise, they'll look like those little Charlie Brown trees from Christmas, you know. Little, little sad tree, like only got a few leaves. You do have to keep at it, I guess, enough to add some of those leaves. You can see on my painting, some of that green is darker and some is lighter. I don't mix the paint very carefully on my plate and that's why I get a variation in color. So some of them are a little more yellow, some have a little more white mixed in with it, some a little more blue, so they're darker green. It gives a nice variation, so it's okay if you don't mix your paint too carefully. Just make sure you experiment with different brush strokes by pressing the brush to the canvas harder in some areas and softer in others and twisting that brush around in your fingers before you apply it to the canvas and you'll get a nice variety of textures. And some of those leaves can go all the way off the edges of your canvas and around the gallery wrap as well. Along the top and the sides, wherever you like. And I'm using a little medium sized brush for this. If you you can experiment. If you have a bigger brush, you can try that out. That might be, I'm trying to get little dots. I didn't go with the big brush, but try it out. See if it works for you. Otherwise, you could use a little skinny brush and make tiny little leaves. If you're very patient, you could uh, just add these leaves for a while. Let me hold that up so you can see the little coaster. Some of my leaves have more yellow mixed in, some more green, some more blue, some more white. So it's kind of a variation at this point, but I haven't really gone in for those yellow ones. We'll do that in just a minute. I'm gonna have to get more white on my palette because I ran out. And I am letting some of those leaves uh, float towards the bottom of my canvas, past the center mark of the canvas and letting some of them just appear as though they're floating to the forest floor. So just a tap here and there, a little, little dot or dash. Just a whole lot of tapping. Tap, 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 tap. All right. That's my kind of underpainting of green leaves. So let me hold that still so you can see. And I gotta go around that edge too.
So I grabbed some white paint. And ran out of white. And once you're done with the green layer of leaves, now we can go for that yellow layer. So now I picked up more white from my collection and I can mix that white paint with the yellow paint. I don't want to use the yellow by itself because it is a very see-through color in the acrylic. So I am mixing white paint with yellow paint on my plate to get kind of a lemon yellow. And I'm using my medium-sized brush for this. And I do want it, uh, the kind of texture it came out of the package with, so it's not water mixed with the paint this time, just white paint and yellow mixed together. Loading up the tips of the bristles, that medium-sized brush, and I'm gonna go on and put those yellow leaves in over top of my white, or of my green. So same technique, just tap, tap, tapping those on all over the place. Now do be mindful of your sky in the background and your green leaves this time, and you don't wanna totally cover those things. You wanna leave some of that showing through and sparkling through. So uh, you don't wanna go overboard as you're applying these. You do wanna be mindful of where you're placing your little dots, but it's just a lot of tap, tap, tapping those on there. And you can stand back every once in a while and take the whole thing in to see where you're placing them. There's no particular pattern to where they're going. They're just kind of in over top and among those green leaves. I just want to leave some sky showing through and some green leaves. And I want to group some of the yellow close together and make some of it far apart so that I get a nice natural variation. Just trying to stay away from regular patterns. I also do want to leave some of the aspen trunks showing through here and there, just peeking through. So I want to be careful to leave some of those showing. Totally up to you as an artist though. The sample here, the artist really filled in with a lot, a lot of leaves. So if that's your preference, you can keep adding those little dots until it's all filled in. Maybe that's your jam. I'm gonna make some of those go all the way off the top edge of my canvas. And remember, mix a little bit of white in with the yellow paint because it'll cover over the green a little bit better if you mix white with it because it acts as a primer and thickens up that white paint or thickens up that yellow paint. And I'm making some of those leaves bigger by pressing the brush harder to the canvas and some smaller by making lighter little taps. I am loading the tips of the bristles up with paint. Oops, let me show you that. And then, uh, but it's kind of a light touch. So a lot of paint, but a light touch. Tap, tap, tap. make sure you stand back from your work and take the whole thing in from a few feet away. The artist is always sitting much closer than the viewer experiencing the painting. So you got to step back and take the whole thing in and make sure that you're spreading the color around kind of evenly over the canvas and that it's going on in places where you want it. I'm using a medium sized brush. You could also use a small brush as well or a bigger brush if you're not patient and you want to 
<laughs> they make a whole bunch, bunch of leaves at once. Just remember to twist that brush around in your fingertips to vary the brush strokes too. I am concentrating these from the center of the canvas more towards the top, but I do want to make some falling towards the bottom too. So we want to make sure we get a few flying in the breeze towards the bottom of the forest floor. And actually, if you want to paint more, you could go along the bottom edge and make a whole forest floor covering your roots as well. That's up to you. And this painting, the trunks go right off the bottom edge, but you could uh, make a whole carpet of leaves at the bottom if you wanted to make it look like that was the very floor of the forest along the bottom edge of your canvas. That's up to you. It's a very relaxing painting. Just a lot of little tapping dots. Let me hold that up so you can see a little closer. Some of those are kind of like little teardrop shapes because I tapped the brush to the canvas and maybe drew it across slightly. Let's see if I can show you that. Just kind of drawing it across as I tap. You can experiment with your textures. And I'm leaving some of that green showing through and some of the blue sky showing through. But I'm grouping some of the yellow together and leaving some of them floating separately far apart too. I want to just keep away from a regular pattern. So there's some blobs of yellow close together and some just floating free by themselves. See in here, I had accidentally smudged a little black paint on the bottom. That's where I, you can cheat and fix with your leaves. Nobody will ever know because I covered them over my little black marks with some yellow leaves. It, it'd be like I meant it that way. And if you feel like one color is taking over and you want balance it. It's okay to go back and add some green back in there too. So some of mine, I just have some of these more sparsely covered. But I don't know. I don't know how much 
more. I want to put those yellow leaves on there. I do want to get a little bit more variation. So you can add some red or orange leaves as well. Of course, if you want to go with orange, first you'd want to clean off that brush, swish it around really well in the water jar and blot it on the paper towel. And then you want to start with white paint. Whenever I start mixing, I start with the lighter colors first. And you can mix a little bit of yellow on with the white, get a lemon yellow, and then add just a touch of red. You only need a little bit of red to create an orange. So you can get that going on your plate there. Otherwise, you could go with some red leaves, but I might add a little bit of white to that red paint as well. I always add a little bit of white to the colors because it helps it cover over better. In this case, I'm doing an orange, so a little bit of white mixed with the yellow and then added a tiny bit of red and going to get just a couple of leaves that are red here and there too. And this is, I um, want to make a very subtle uh, addition of orange paint. I don't want that to take over. So just a few dots here and there to just give a hint of color. I just want to make that kind of a sparkly little surprise. I don't want to, I want, I don't want it to be like an element of the painting so much as just an interesting variation in texture. So just a couple groupings or dots here and there, and I'm gonna leave it at that. And I'll add a nice kind of sparkle. We do get a little bit of orange in Colorado, but not too much. So we don't wanna go overboard with that. Hold that up so you can see a little closer. There's maybe less than a dozen little groupings of orange on there, some dots, some little, close together groupings of orange paint, but just a touch. And then I think I'm gonna go back to my yellow paint and add some more yellow leaves. I want that to be the dominant color, yellow. Make sure that you clean your brush off. I just had too much orange on that brush. Gotta make sure you clean it between colors. So swishing that brush around the water jar, blotting it on the paper towel, and then picking up some yellow paint, and then you go back to the yellow. Especially when you go back to lighter colors, you gotta make sure you have a clean brush. And I'm going all the way off the top with some of those leaves and over the edge. I'm looking at it also to make sure I'm breaking up any patterns that I may have if I put those leaves on in a regular pattern. I want to break that up, make some different shapes so that I don't get a regular pattern. Got to keep nature looking natural. Now on my sample here, it is really filled in with leaves and you can add as many leaves as you like. You can go wild or you could leave some more sky showing through and leave some of those aspen branches showing through. Another thing is maybe you're oh, sorry that you lost an aspen branch that you liked in the background there, but don't despair. You can always adjust things with the acrylic paint. I just got my little skinny brush out of the water jar and you can add a branch back in by taking some white paint and painting a little branch over top too. If you feel sad that your branch got lost, you can always add some of those in over top and nobody will know. I am gonna add a couple leaves over that as well so that it doesn't look like it totally painted on top, but you can, you can add some branches back in afterwards, after the fact, if you felt like you kind of hid them and you wanted them showing a little bit. You can also go back and add a couple of black marks on those new branches. You can go back and forth with your elements.
and then add in as many leaves as you want. I'm just tapping those leaves in there. And that's pretty much all the steps you need to know for this painting. I'm, I don't want to rush you on your leaves at all, so I want to make sure you get a chance to do your leaves and you can spend as much time as you like with those. You can also, you're welcome to um, unmute yourselves and chat and socialize. I'm going to continue to paint these leaves for a little while, but um, I'm going to leave the painting sitting up for you to look at as well. And we also do have one frame that's from the studio that you can always use for an example if you want a closer look at the painting. If I'm not here to hold mine up. But um, continue to paint your leaves to your heart's content, but you can also chat amongst yourselves. I do want to make sure that uh, I answered all your questions. You can always leave me any questions you have in that chat. And I want to remind you to um, you can bring your finished paintings in to see us at Sipping and Painting Hampton and sign up for an upcoming class. We do have Actually, there's a class starting right now at the studio. We have little classes going on. And um, you can come join us and paint live, or else you can join us for the Zoom classes, which we have all the time, or check them out on our YouTube channel and subscribe and like those as well. But I really appreciate you joining me and Sabrina today at Virtual Sipping and Painting Hampton and painting Aspen trees for your event today. So thank you for joining us to paint. I think I threw too many dots. <laughs> Yeah, that looks absolutely insane. So I don't, it looks like dots threw up on my trees. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs>
I'm done. All right, and when you finally decide you're done, make sure you sign your painting. So I'm gonna use my little skinny brush and sign my initials in the corner. So make sure you sign the work of art so everybody knows who did it when you hang it up. And we can take a group picture on our Zoom as well. If you hold up your paintings, we can do a little, little group shot if you wanna put on your video and show us what you've been up to. First, I just put my little initials in the corner there. And then we can all hold them up if you want to take a little group picture. Let's see what you've been up to. Yeah, totally a group picture. I see everybody's names, but you can... Can you screenshot on yours? Because mine is a little small. Oh, uh, you can come around. My, my assistant's oh. helping me with the technical parts of this. Oop. So do you want us to hold the pictures now? Yeah, let's see what you've been doing. Hey, you don't have to be finished now, but... We'll do an in-process picture. You can hide behind your painting or just show it next to, your, next to yourself. Uh, let's, let's see. Mine doesn't meet my own standards, so I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, Mine doesn't meet my own standards. <laughs> Uh, it's shift apple three. There we go. Shift apple three. Oh, beautiful. Look at these. These are lovely. Everybody's got nice color variations. Nice. So we got a couple screenshots. Nice. Beautiful. I love the color variations. You guys are and lended your creativity to our Aspen Forest. Some of them are East Coast Aspen Forest or East Coast something else. <laughs> We're glad you joined us. Uh, so thank you again for coming to Virtual Sipping and Painting Hampton. I really appreciate it. So is that already finished? It's however long you want to paint, you're welcome to. I'll leave this sitting up here for inspiration and we'll leave the Zoom on, zoom on for a little while so that you have that as reference. But that's all the steps to our painting. So that is all you need to know.